All right, so more interesting physiology lessons. Um, so woke up today, felt great. Um, today was VO2 max day, which is outdoor hill repeats. And I'm not a hundred yards out of the house. And I'm like, I feel horrible. My legs just feel so heavy. You know, there's a short, steep hill right outside my house. And normally it's, it feels great to just punch my way up. Felt horrible. Uh, so anyway, go to begin the intervals. And as you heard me discuss before, I really, I'm looking at obviously at what is the average power for the four minutes. Um, but I'm looking just as closely at what is my heart rate recovery in the first 60 seconds when I complete the interval. So uh, as soon as I get to the top of the interval, I hit the lap button and it starts a new timer. And then I'm looking for that heart rate recovery. And again, my goal is to hit at least 30 beats of recovery in that first 60 seconds of my four minute recovery. Uh, and again, sometimes on a great day, I'm gonna hit 45 beats of recovery. And on the first one, I hit 24. I was like, yeah, that's that's interesting. Um, and to make a long story short, this, this pattern continued throughout the, the workout, but except it got worse and worse and worse, such that on the last interval, I only recovered 18 beats after uh, the top. So what does that mean? Well. We had a recent podcast with Joel Jameson where we discussed heart rate variability. And I think Joel did a great job explaining that um, heart rate variability really is a wonderful measurement. It's probably the best in-field measurement for the relative balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic control. And again, these are not kind of digital knobs that are zeros and ones on and off. They're really quite analog. And when you um, have a low heart rate recovery, just as if you have a low heart rate variability, which is another measure of that, it tells you that the balance is more in favor of sympathetic tone. So either sympathetic is up too much and or parasympathetic is down too much. Um, and that obviously impacts performance as evidenced by the fact that my um, output today in these intervals was about 10% lower. So wattage was a full 10% lower. Um, and again, I don't have a great explanation for the why, but I would say that the, the final point I would make, which is more psychological than anything else is about halfway through the workout, I contemplated just bagging the workout. And there, there are probably some coaches who would say that's the right thing to do. In fact, that's probably what I would have done 10 years ago is just bagged the workout and said, well, I'm, I'm really doing junk miles right now because I'm not even getting within 10% of the power I should be getting here. Let's go, let's go do something easy today and come back and do this workout tomorrow or the next day. And, and that's probably the textbook answer if you're optimizing for performance. But because my time is limited, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get back out. It's probably not going to be until next weekend. I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to kind of gut check this one and get through it. And, it, and it's miserable. And truly, it was miserable. I, I will say this. I hated every single pedal stroke I took today. It wasn't enjoyable. Um, I, didn't, I didn't even feel that kind of endorphin rush. Um, so I actually think there's benefit in that. <clears throat> I think once in a while, it's just good to do something that sucks and you embrace it and, and that's the end of it. But the, the truth of it is I probably got less of a fit, pure physiologic benefit today than I would have got um, <clears throat> had I backed off, maybe done a zone two today, come back tomorrow, a new day, I could have been totally fresh. Anyway, so that's that's a little bit about heart rate variability in the field.